Now that AMD have released their 7000 CPUs on the AM5 platform, it is a great time to upgrade for those of you still on the AM4. Prices of the AM4 CPUs are coming down, and one of the greatest things about the AM4 platform was how many generations of CPU each board would actually support. But it may not just be as easy as dropping the CPU into the motherboard and everything working fine. You may need a BIOS update. And that can actually be quite scary for some. But in today's video, we're going to show you how to actually do it and specifically how Gigabyte have made things a little less scary and a little bit easier for you. If you're currently already sitting on the AM4 platform, you're probably already aware of how many CPUs that platform can support. Even the older first generation boards like this one from Asus will support the first gen Ryzen's all the way up to the 5000 series. But we will need to do a bit of a BIOS update on it. Now why should you update your BIOS? There is actually a number of reasons. New BIOS updates can not only bring bug fixes and security vulnerability fixes, but they can also add new features to a board as well as extended compatibility. Now to update a BIOS is not that difficult and most motherboards will actually have a built-in feature within the BIOS itself. But this is where it can actually get a little bit scary and there's a bit of a disclaimer around it. Whenever you're updating your BIOS, because it's actually writing to the chips on the board, if you have any kind of disruption with power or if you turn the machine off, you can actually brick your motherboard. Now that is not on all motherboards because some motherboards do have a dual BIOS system. So if you do corrupt one, the other BIOS will take over and copy to the original. But for a lot of you out there, that won't be a feature, particularly if it's on a lower end board. Now to update the BIOS through the BIOS, it's not that difficult. We actually managed to do this recently on an old AM3 Plus motherboard where we wanted to support a new FX 8350 chip and the motherboard didn't support it with the previous BIOS. We are going to be doing a video on that in the future, so make sure you hit the subscribe button if you want to see that kit. But the process wasn't that difficult at all. All we had to do was go into the BIOS, find the feature for the easy flash, which is what most motherboards have, download the latest BIOS and put it on a USB stick, insert it into the machine, and then select that ROM file from the BIOS flash system and tell it to flash the BIOS. Now, sometimes flashing a BIOS can take a bit of time, but you will get a progress bar as you do it. And once it's finished, it will try to reset the machine and everything should be good. But for those of you on a Gigabyte motherboard, you may be in luck because they've actually provided an easier method. Now this is our benchmarking system and it actually contains a Gigabyte Aorus motherboard. It's actually this one specifically, it's the B450 Aorus Pro. Now I tend to find that the 400 series of the AMD motherboards are actually one of the best and that's purely because of the compatibility that comes with them. If you look on the AMD website, there is a table that shows you what CPUs are supported by each generation. And the 400 series actually supports pretty much every CPU from the first gen Ryzen's all the way up to the 5000 series. The CPU that we're going to be changing in our system is actually going to go to this one. This is a new one that we recently purchased and it's actually the AMD Ryzen 5 5600G. What's currently in this system is actually a first generation Ryzen. It's a Ryzen 7 1700 and it's a pretty decent CPU. But what we really need is the graphics because when we actually come to benchmark graphics cards, it'd be really good to have the graphics built into the processor so that we can do any kind of troubleshooting. The CPU is also much faster than the first generation due to the IPC increases and the architectural changes that AMD have made. So it's going to be a great upgrade for us, but we haven't actually updated the BIOS on this motherboard for a very long time. So we will need to do that. And that's what we're going to walk through now. What you will need to be able to do, this is a USB stick, which we've inserted into the top of the machine. It's a blank stick, so we can actually get what we want on there. Second, you'll need a piece of software, and that piece of software can be got from the Gigabyte website. Now, if you search Google, you will actually find the Gigabyte App Center webpage, but it's not very useful because it pretty much just tells you how the, mother, how the software itself works, but it doesn't provide any download link. So what you'll need to do is actually go and search for the motherboard that you've got. Now, this is the motherboard that we've got here. It's the B450 Aorus Pro Revision 1. And what we'll need to do is go to the Support tab, search all the way down to Utility, which then jumps to the bottom of the page for some reason, scroll up, and then what you want to do is download the App Center. Now, once you've downloaded the App Center, you'll actually be provided with this Aorus App Center application. And we've currently got two applications installed. One is the RGB Fusion 2.0 software, which controls all the RGB. The other is a tool called AtBIOS. And you can get these by clicking on the little live update tab at the top, go into the record once it's actually loaded, go into the recommended installs and selecting those apps from that tool. If we go back to our apps, we can actually open the AtBIOS software and this will give us some information about our system. 
Once it's loaded, we can go to the BIOS information here and we can start having a look at what kind of type it is. So if we go down to the third one down, we have a current BIOS version and it is the B450 Aorus Pro F60E. Now that is actually quite an old BIOS on this one and it hasn't been done since we actually dropped a 3000 series processor in here. Even though the motherboard said that it came 3000 compatible, it wasn't when we did it, so we had to update it back then. Now that we know the actual BIOS that we've got, we need to go and look back onto the website uh, for our motherboard and take a look at the different BIOSes available. So as we can see here, the latest is F63D. If we scroll back down, we can see that the f 60 does actually seem to support the chips for the 5000 and the 4000 series processors. The problem that we've got is that we're actually on a G chip, so it may not be supported by that one. I'm not quite sure. It says it's a 5000. So no, if we have a look, the F61 here actually has an update for the Ryzen 5000 G series processor. So we will need to update this BIOS, but we're gonna grab the latest one anyway, because as you can see, there's lots of different updates and major vulnerability updates and all these kind of things that we'll want to get while we do it. Once we've downloaded that BIOS, we're gonna be presented with a zip file. And what we'll need to do is extract that to our USB drive. It shouldn't take too long. And once that's complete, we can have a look on the flash drive. And there we do, we have our BIOS file there. The BIOS file for this one is a B450A0PR.63D. Now that we have that file downloaded and we didn't need to necessarily put it onto USB, you need to put it onto USB if you're gonna be doing it through the BIOS. But of course, we're gonna be updating it through the software. So it doesn't really matter where it's downloaded. We're gonna leave it on the USB stick just, for, just to show you. But what we need to do now is go to back to the BIOS tool, select update from file, then we need to go and find the path of where our file is. And if we go to the E drive where it actually is, we can say, okay. It's actually asking for the file itself. So we'll go in there, we'll select the actual file, the B450A0PR63D file. We'll click okay, and then we'll click next. Now this is gonna actually pose us with a few different windows. So use face wizard to change your bias post image. No, we're not gonna do that then it will give us an actual warning. So because bias flashing has potentially risk, to flash the bias, please do it with caution. Inadequate bias flashing may result in system malfunction. So this is what we were talking about before, where if you actually disrupt this machine while it's updating the bias, it could corrupt that bias itself and make the board actually unusable. So be careful, make sure there's no funny Windows updates going that's gonna actually reboot the machine. Make sure all your power cables are securely in and that you don't knock the machine while it's doing it. Now we'll just click OK. Save the current BIOS. So we can save the current BIOS to the system and we'll say yes and we'll stick it back onto the E. And then we click and we wait. One eternity later. Now once the process is finished, the machine will actually reboot itself and go back into Windows. From there, we need to actually go down to the corner, open up our App Center and verify that the file actually, or the BIOS actually got updated. So we go back to our App BIOS tool wait for it to load up then under bios information we can see which the current bios version is in this case it's the b450 aorus pro f63d which is exactly the bios that we wanted on this system so now all we need to do is actually change the cpu over and give it a test now that we've changed the cpu and actually rebooted the system you may actually see a few things as it's trying to boot up we actually got a bit of an error message when it started to boot and we had to basically just reset the BIOS. Now, when you actually update the BIOS itself, it would have reset everything anyway. So that's something to be aware of when you're actually doing this. If you have any custom fan profiles or any kind of configuration in the BIOS, it most likely got reset when you did this. So you're gonna to have to go and reset that back up just like we did on this system. But once we're in Windows, we want to actually confirm that our CPU is working. Now to do that, we have actually used an application called CPU-Z. And as we open it up, we can see that our CPU is an AMD Ryzen 5. 5600G. So the BIOS update has actually worked. Also, while you're inside CPU Z, you may see that your memory timings and all that kind of thing are actually being reset too. And that again will be, of course, because of the BIOS itself. But apart from that, this is actually now an up to date system. We've got our old CPU here, the old 71700. Not sure what we're going to do with it now. So Drop it in the comments below. What do you recommend that we do with this? Should we do a bit of a budget build out of it? See how well it actually performs today? Or should we just put it on the shelf for another day? Don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you like this kind of content and also drop this video a like if it's helped you. But until the next time, we'll catch you in the next one.